Okay, so here we are going to talk about plant physiologist next chapter. That chapter name is phloem translocation. And I am Pro Professor Rishkesh Kodade, Assistant Professor at Sindhushi College, Adab Sir, Pune. So here syllabus, first of all. Syllabus is translocation in phloem. In which points are given such as composition of phloem sap, girdling experiment and pressure probe model. So these three points are given. And we are going to explore each and every point in detail with respect to exam. So three lectures are allowed by university, but uh, one lecture will be sufficient to understand the basic concept at graduation level. You can go deep into these topics for your PhD also, where four to five years can be uh, will not be sufficient. But for understanding, we are going to take over this topic in one lecture. So first of all, what is composition of phloem sap? Before understanding composition of phloem sap, you need to understand what do you mean by phloem first. So phloem is specialized vascular tissue in plants. These are vascular tissues in plants and responsible for a transportation of organic nutrients. So sir, these are very booky words. I would like to explain further detail about phloem. The phloem consists of several cells because they are specialized tissues. Tissue includes cells. So which are these cells included? Sieve elements, companion cells, phloem fiber, and phloem parenchyma. To understand this chapter, only two cells are sufficient. That is sieve element and companion cell. We will discuss in detail about them. But first of all, when you take transverse section of your plant, stem a region. Here, uh, the diagram is shown that the outermost region is epidermis, then you have parenchymatous, which are food storage tissue, then you have phloem, then cambium, then xylem, and inside pith. Always and always phloem are present outside to the xylem. Okay. Cambium role is for secondary growth in plant. That is not our topic, so we will restrict ourselves to the phloem. So phloem consists of several types of cell. So here is beautiful diagram showing that sieve tube member companion cell, phloem parenchyma, sieve plates. So sieve plates are those regions where two sieve elements are connecting. So this is one, this is second, and this connection point is driven by sieve plate. Literally, it is a sieve where generally you can see pore structure is present. So in a diagrammatic fashion, you can highlight this. The outer side you have. Uh, phloem parenchyma. So these are reddish color cells are companion cell. So in between the companion cell, you have sieve cell elements and which are guarded by these pores. So see, this is the sieve plate here and this is your sieve element. This is companion cell phloem parenchyma. Okay. So composition of phloem, you have understood that it consists to various different types of cells. In that, two cells are important. I already said that first one is sieve tube element cell. So what do you mean by sieve tube element cell, which are elongated cell? You can see they are elongated cell. Here, I'm talking about this area. And are the main transport pathway. So whatever food material is transported in phloem is done by the, this sieve tube element. This is tube and guarded by the pores. So they are connected end to end through sieve plates. Uh, here you can see sieve plate. Sieve plate consists sieve pores, which have perforation. Perforation means holes that allows the movement of nutrient between adjacent cell. The sieve tube element lack most cellular components, including nucleus. So you can notice the difference in these cells that phloem parenchyma cell have nucleus. These are black dot are nucleus. Companion cell also has nucleus, but sieve tube element do not have nucleus. You have to write this point in their answer. Then these reddish cells are companion cell, which are very helpful, directly not involved in transportation, but they are supporting in transportation. What information we have here? They are closely associated with the sieve tube element. Yes, they are closely associated here and provide metabolic support and energy to the sieve tube element. Okay. Companion cells are connected to the CO2 element by numerous plasmodesmata. So plasmodesmata are those area where you have openings. Here plasmodesmata are not, not visible. But plasmodesmata through which the cell shows trans, inter, inter, intercell transportation. Okay. So this is the composition of phloem. We have understood the phloem. But uh, what is the importance of this phloem? So you can notice here leaf and root. So whatever food materials are synthesized in this leaf are transported to the root. So 
so this is flow m importance the movement of nutrient through the flow m occur through the process called translocation so flow m importance you can write that translocation of food material a diagrammatic presentation of mechanism of translocation okay this process involves loading of sugar loading means the leaf loads the sugar into the sieve tube element and unloading of sugar from this sieve tube element one second excuse me from this sieve tube element you have unloading process means from leaf to sieve tube element loading and from sieve tube element to the area where food material are required it is unloading the movement of sugar is facilitated by pressure flow mechanism between source and sink so source is the area where loading takes place and sink is the area where unloading takes place we will detail discuss more about them don't worry about this so flow of translocation the flow of sap what do you mean by flow of sap first of all so as per your syllabus they have given word composition of flow of sap so we will understand first what is flow of sap the composition of flow of sap it includes sugar amino acid organic acid protein potassium chloride phosphate manganese at least five you have to remember but should not forget sugar because sugar is the main 80 to 106 mg per liter composition because they comprises more section sugar after that amino acid so sugar includes which type of sugar fructose sugar maximum sucrose sugar are transported here i have highlighted sucrose fructose mannose glucose galactose all the sugar you just remember that sugar in which sucrose are main uh, transportation sugar which is transported in phloem sap so composition of phloem sap includes sugar mainly sucrose then we have amino acids various diverse different types of amino acids which are required for protein synthesis then we have organic acids such as citric acid other organic acids are transported in phloem sap because phloem transports this phloem sap so what is the phloem sap we are talking here then we have various hormones because hormones are synthesized in one location and delivered to the other location with the help of this phloem in the phloem sap the phloem sap is solution which consists of various different types of nutrients you can notice here hormones proteins and enzymes we also present in this phloem sap as well as phytochemicals such as alkaloid phenolic compounds flavonoid terpenoids are present in phloem sap this you have will have to write in your exam if question is asked such as what is composition of phloem sap so syllabus point of view we have discussed about composition of phloem sap now we will talk about girdling experiment so what is girdling experiment this is very easy experiment i think you must have studied about this experiment in your previous classes where a suitable plant material is selected and the bark of that plant material is removed that girdle formation takes place so this is bark and you can see the bark formation a uh, bark is removed and food material is accumulated at this region obviously because phloem of this region removed and food material will be accumulated at this region what is procedure for this select healthy plant identify suitable stem means from one plant you have to do this experiment on particular branch using sharp knife or blade you have to do this girdle experiment here carefully remove the ring bark of the phloem tissue monitor the plant after girdling you you will have to take uh, readings and you will have to observe the, what happens to that plant you have to compare that plant with the control plant the control plant means that plant where experiment is not done and you will have to compare or measure the differences in the growth and on girdler experiment plant and non girdler experiment so this is very easy steps you can write these steps in your exam uh, with respect to girdling experiment so these are real time photographs this photograph shows that after girdling experiment the phloem is removed in this region response resulted into the accumulation of food material in this area this is freshly done experiment and this is uh, this photograph is taken after one month of the experiment so syllabus point of view we have completed two points the last point the pressure flow model which is very important and tedious to understand so this is the diagram where you can notice that the central part is the sieve tube element portion so component cells are located 
near to the CO2 element. This is the leaf region. From leaf to the CO2 element, food material are transported through the companion cell. You have to remember this. So from the leaf, which is also considered as source, loading is takes place into the CO2 element through the companion cell. So pressure flow model, also known as mass flow hypothesis, that, that explain the movement of sugar in the phloem part. It proposed that movement of sugar occur through com combi combination of osmotic pressure and pressure heat. Okay, let it be. So what is pressure flow model? So you have to notice that what happens first step is the cells in a leaf, which is considered as source, he is providing or transporting food material through the com companion cell to the, what is this, CO2 element. So you can notice that food material are transported from here to here. So for food material, when enter into the CO2 element, water will enter because it creates osmotic gradient. And food material is transported from com companion cell to the sink. So here, what happens? loading takes place at source region in loading process where food material from the source to the co2 elements are transported and in unloading process food material from co2 element to the required area which is considered as sink so at source loading takes place at sink unloading takes place this is what you have to remember so this is the pathway you can take screenshot and read carefully about that what happens in first stage what happened in second stage, what happened in third stage. So these are stages in which four things are happening. In first stage, loading of sugar in CO2 element from source takes place. The next step, loading of sugar creates turgor pressure in CO2 elements. And third step, turgor pressure causes movement of sap from leaf to the root. And in fourth step, you can notice unloading of sugar to the sink area takes place. So these are detailed pathways I have provided here. You can read carefully what happens here. So all this happened because of pressure gradient, you can understand. So this way we have completed the topic with respect to the flow uh, mechanism to transport the flow himself. Thank you.